So in this video, we're gonna talk about the Sony ZV-E1 and how I recorded for over 10 hours. Also, I shot a video that I'm gonna be showing you guys, you know, during the day and at night, showing you high dynamic range that you can get from this camera and also the great low light performance from the ZV-E1. So stick around until the end of this video because I am going to be revealing a simple hack that is going to allow you to record indefinitely with this camera. But most importantly, I'm gonna tell you why the image quality of this camera is not the same as the Sony a7S III and the Sony FX3. I'll tell you that after the video, so let's go watch it. So I hope you had enjoyed this video guys. And like I mentioned before, the setup was exactly what you see right now. The 50 millimeter F1.8 with an ND filter, the Sony ZV-E1, one battery, and a V60 SD card, 250 gigs. So with that, I have plenty of juice to shoot. And as you've seen, you know, I started shooting during the day and shot a lot of video. I just didn't want to put a lot of the personal stuff, just put my trip in Uber to uh, the restaurant and all the way back. But, uh, you know, plenty of battery life. Uh, this camera can actually, you know, provide you long shooting time. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room and that's gonna be overheating. And how do I manage not to overheat this camera? So the first thing that I wanna tell you is that last night I left the camera recording when I went to bed and I woke up seven hours later and the camera still recording. How I managed that was super simple. Now, the temperature right here in the studio is 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and this is my home, so 75 degrees Fahrenheit is where we leave the AC. 
I left all the doors open and that's going to be the only hack that you're gonna have to do. Leave the ports door open. Of course, the screen has to be open because this is where the utmost heat actually happens and in front around the sensor, of course. And if you can, if you're gonna be shooting a tripod, you know, open the battery door. And before I forget, you gotta set the high temperature turn off to high. Now this is going to allow the camera to actually exhaust the air through the cracks and holes that you have, you know, in these ports, because otherwise you're gonna be trapping that heat and the heat is gonna be building up exponentially. So if you can afford that, I mean, it doesn't bother me at all just to shoot with all the ports open. And if you are brave enough, you could probably remove them, but I wouldn't recommend you do that. And that is the only thing that I did to get unlimited recording with a Sony ZV-1. Now, I gotta say that the camera was pretty hot, but not as hot where, you know, I actually burn my hand. It's a tolerable heat and not something that is gonna burn you. Remember, this is made out of plastic, so before you burn, most likely the plastic is going to melt. Now, one thing that I do have to mention is noise and how this camera does not shoot exactly the same image as the Sony a7S III, FX3, and the Sony FX6, for example. For the sole reason that all those cameras that I just mentioned, they have either a passive or active cooling system. And you're gonna ask, what does it have to do? Well, it has a lot to do, and this is something that my friend James Jackson, I'm gonna list his channel right here so you can go and check it out. Um, you know, he knows a lot about cameras. He has a channel dedicated about cameras. And I was talking to him and he told me, it's pretty simple. Heat in the sensor is going to degrade your image as the heat builds up and that is gonna result into more noise in your images. And actually, indeed, you can actually see in the video that closer to the end in the uh, low light performance, the noise keeps creeping up as the camera, um, you know, heats up a little bit more. So. That's why the image quality that you're gonna get from this camera is not gonna be identical as the Sony a7S III. The Sony a7S III is gonna give you a cleaner image, so is the Sony FX3 and the Sony FX6. Those cameras are always gonna be at the top of the food chain for obvious reasons. So who would I recommend this camera to? And it's pretty simple. For anyone looking for a light package, you know, the power of full frame, and a camera that is the smallest, but also with the utmost low light performance. From 640 ISO to 12,000 ISO, you're gonna capture great video in lower light performance. I'm gonna wrap this up right now. I hope you had enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think about the Sony ZV-1? And if you had had the same problem with the overheating. Until then, I will see you in the next video.